Hello, everyone! Uh, today's video is gonna be different. Today's video is gonna be different background. Same poster. Why? Who knows? Uh, Phoenix Magic. I've been doing a series on amino and posting this uh, to certain aminos. Um, I think about branching it out to different ones because I felt like, because you know, there were a lot that I'm in and was like, you know what, it, it deserves this. It deserves to have this specific information within it. Um, it's just, you know, it's it's hard to go like, oh, I'm spamming, but you know. Uh, um, I've been doing this for a pretty, pretty, pretty long while, like a, like a mm, few months. Uh, like I say a few months, it's because like when I first met my spirit guide, it wasn't that long ago. My spirit guide is a phoenix and you know, it, it, you know, took me a while to like get my bearings. With a, a Phoenix Magic, what you first need to know is history. In uh, Phoenix Magic, when it comes to the Phoenix and its history, um, we had, I had to think, uh, where did it start? Where did it come from? And of course it came from Egypt. <laughs> um, like, like most things, let's be honest. Um, and in, in Egypt, or Kemet, in Egypt, it was called the Benu, Benu, Benu bird, uh, pronunciations through the door, really. Uh, um, but the Benu bird is said to be uh, Ra, the sun god's Ba, uh, part of his spirit, um, soul. Um, and how it first came into being, it said in the Sea of Chaos came, uh, came an island, and on the island was uh, the Benu, and uh, when it first cried out, it started time. Its cries literally started time. I'm sorry, but that's really cool to me. Um, um, and if you see, you know, a phoenix, how it has a maybe, it has a connection to time, that's probably why, because of that. Um, now, of course, we all know a phoenix is associated with uh, rebirth, um, immortality, a whole lot. Um, um, you know, and in a lot of cultures, uh, this specific thing just kind of goes all over. Um, but back to history. So in its history, um, a phoenix, um, when it when it gets back to it, you hear more about the phoenix in this part uh, when it comes to Heliopolis. I think I'm saying that right. Don't really know. But in Heliopolis, um, when a phoenix dies and is reborn, um, a phoenix, first off, before it dies, um, collects uh, a bunch of aromatic woods and stuff to make a nest and when it dies it goes up into flames and with it you know the nest and then the phoenix makes an egg w out of the ashes with myrrh and brings it to Heliopolis um and you know uh, Heliopolis I believe it was a city in Egypt or still is not entirely sure I should know this <laughs> Uh, sorry, I'm just really excited because mm, I'm doing this. Um, and with that, um, you know, we get to see a little more about like its habits and whatnot. Uh, it's a phoenix is said to live to 5,000, 10,000 years, um, sometimes even 15. It's uh, it depends on which where you're taking it really. Um, and it's also you know there's also the other type of phoenix where it's the thunderbird or maybe the russian firebird um the other not the other day um a friend of mine who was real interested and did a meditation to meet one um met like a daughter of a version of a phoenix that it was called i think simmer i believe uh, i'm not gonna tell you their name but um yeah and it was really interesting because like i've never heard about this and it's like an iranian thing and I was like, damn, this is cool. So, um, that and another friend of mine, um, their phoenix was connected to water somehow. And I was like, dang, that's cool. So, you know, when it comes to the phoenix, it's like mm, a little all over the place. And I love it. Um, not only that, but uh, in China, uh, the phoenix is described hella much. Um, I, I, I can't even begin to list the the descriptions of their f version of the phoenix it's so much um from like the from the beak all the way down to like the the legs and the feathers like it's mm. um but the phoenix there is associated with um the empress 
while the Emperor is associated with a dragon. Um, so in their um, lore, a phoenix is uh, associated with divine femininity. And, you know, that's, that's really interesting to me because usually a phoenix or the Bennu is associated with a male god or deity. So um, to find one that's different, you know, that's real cool. Not only that, but in its history, um, alchemists, especially in Arabia, their um, Arabian alchemists uh, will use the symbol of a phoenix to represent transformation because in alchemy, transformation is a part of it. And um, so it's a very powerful symbol. So now that we know the history and how it's kind of been moved around, you know, um, let's Let's just kind of talk about how does one use or work with a phoenix? Um, so like how we, how we spoke about in alchemy, they would use the symbol of a phoenix for transformation. It's a very powerful symbol. Um, how they would also choose to work with one is um, maybe um, they would choose to work with one when working with a sun deity like uh, Ra, Apollo, or a fire deity like Bridget or Hephaestus you know, um, etc. Um, and it, it was kind of like that. They'd also use the symbol for rebirth, you know, to help them, you know, try to move past some, some things in their past, you know? And um, I personally have done this. Um, I have tried to use it to just kind of like burn away my past self because that's the old me, time to bring in the new me. But um, something to keep in mind is you can't really do that all the time um, because sometimes the old you is still very present in your current life and you can't just burn it away and then move on like the ashes are still there. Um, so you've got to you got to really work it. You've got to you've got to. You gotta make sure that when you, it's time, it's time, and rebirth, it's it's difficult. It's to constantly be, you know, I imagine live so long, make so many experiences, and then just die and move on. No, you have to be ready, you have to be prepared, you have to be um, mentally sure with, with yourself. So, um, let's, let's just think about this um how would how would you choose to incorporate a phoenix into your craft um how i chose to incorporate it is very kind of slowly it's kind of slowly um i would i i would i started with trying to meditate with my phoenix um granted i haven't done it a lot but um you know once once your phoenix is there it's there uh you know, mine's my spirit guide, so I kind of just kind of count on it always being there. Um, but your your the phoenix that you work with may not be your spirit guide. It may not always you know just kind of be there. It's it's not like draconic magic where you know you do uh, a, a meditation to find your uh, draconic spirit guide and spirit guardian, and then going on to meet all the different dragons. Like no, like with phoenixes like there are very specific ones and you know it's depending on its history it's really gonna depend on you like how are you gonna work with it like what what can you tell from the way it looks so that when you go to look into its history you know better how to interact with it knowing the history before working with one is so so important it is so so important because if you don't know the history you're screwed so know its history know what's going on know what's what and then then start you know getting symbols or um, jewelry or maybe creating a spell or two um, you may find that um, there's a specific uh, type of grounding technique I have a uh, I have a grounding technique that I use and that I have made a post for on certain aminos that I've posted. I'm going to branch out again. Um, and you know, it's there and 
you may find that uh, the phoenix that you work with, um, you may find that the grinding technique is pretty similar, but um, how you do it will really depend on the phoenix that you work with. Um, thus, again, why it's so important for you to get to know your phoenix, um, respect them constantly, be on that respect, be kind. <laughs> I, I have fucked up a few times. I, I have managed to give out information before it was ready and I was like okay well you're on the fence so I'll do it anyways and that's that's wrong it's wrong don't no if it's a maybe don't do it if it's a yes sure if it's a no no uh so again if it's a maybe better to just not do it um and I learned my lesson with that um so to continue with incorporating the phoenix, you know, you do all those things. You, you don't do this for you in the beginning. In the beginning, it's all about the phoenix. It is you, it's like with any relationship, you don't spend the entire relationship focused on you. No, you spend time with each other, learning as much as you can about each other and putting in work to, you know, so you, you know best how to interact and, and respect and love each other. So, and you find with, when you befriend a phoenix and you find that one is kind of just takes a liking to you, you've got a friend for life, my dude. Um, they don't just, they're free spirits. They go where they want and they just kind of do their thing. And you, you're lucky if one just decides to be like, hey, what's going on with you? You wanted to summon one while I'm here? What's up? What's up? Like, it's, you've got to prove to it that you're, you're worth its time, and I don't, and I know for a lot of people that's, that, that gives you a lot of anxiety, because you have a lot of anxiety when um, it comes to people liking you, but just keep in mind that all it wants you to be is yourself. If yourself is kind of anxious and awkward, it's gonna, I, I guarantee you, it's, it's, it's still gonna love you either way. It, a phoenix kind of makes you realize your imperfections and what's going on so that you have the opportunity to kind of just move forward so that when you finally get to that new self, your new self and you're ready to just move on to your new self, you can just burn away the old self and leave the ashes to cosmic winds to just be blown about and forgotten. Um, but of course, never forget your old self. Never forget where you came from. Um, so, and that's why I find that it's really important that you write down your experiences. Because your old self gone by that time, but to, you still need to remember or kind of just get a glimpse at like, holy crap, this is the person I was and this is who I am now. I have changed and grown so much. This is so good for me. Like, it's important to write this stuff down. And even if it's just like five, like three to five sentences, like you can manage it. Um, the notes on your phone, you know, you don't have to use it like a oh, aesthetic journal. Oh my God, y'all. Like, no, you can just use the notes on your phone. It's all right. No one's gonna judge you, especially if it's personal to you and you don't want anyone else looking at it. So just keep doing you so that the phoenix better gets to know you and keep trying to get to know it. I personally have been trying to contact, trying to get in touch, I'm trying to constantly just kind of have conversations with it. Of course, again, like I said, I, I screwed up, made it all about me, so I have to remember, hey, I'm not, it's life. I, it, it has other things it may, may not have to do or may just want to do. I don't have to constantly be bringing it in, so, um, <coughs> that's, that's where I'm going. Um, constantly be aware of what's going on around you, what's going on inside you, and it's, it's there for you when you need it, when you, when you really need it. So, yeah. Phoenix Magic, everyone. I am so happy that I finally got to make a video about this because I've been so excited. Um, I would love to give you some experiences that I have collected, not only for myself, but from others. But unfortunately, that is going to be in a post 
most likely and it's gonna be very it's gonna be hard because I gotta I gotta wait like what's okay for me to say what's not okay for me to say you know that sort of thing um, just be careful when working with a phoenix because again you you could find yourself in a very negative position because you you didn't quite understand the whole dynamic between working with a phoenix and yourself it's it's a lot of work and you'll you'll face some ups and downs and maybe you'll even get a dead end but um, just constantly be reworking it and stuff so uh, yeah okay um, I have to give an amino that I created a shout out. Yes, I created an amino. Eee! Uh, it's an amino for fire slash sun witches. Um, it is specifically for the such. Um, you will find conversations about fire magic, fire safety, um, sun deities, fire deities, um, and the like. You know, just a whole etc. of that. Just that. It is specifically for fire magic, fire witches, and sun magic and sun witches specifically that and um yeah i'm really excited uh so far it's not a lot of members which i understand you know it's gonna take a while um and but i'm really excited and i'm hoping that if you come in you're willing to make an introduction post and just kind of go for it um okay i this has been me phoenix bravitas and i'll see you guys next time you still ain't scared of no heights With the